that you are welcomed. We are so delighted that you are sharing in this experience with us. Perhaps you can't join us in this space, but we want you to know that you are welcomed in our virtual space. We are so grateful that you are taking this opportunity to share in our worship experience. Yes, we are on a mission here at ABC and you are a part of that. Listen, our motto and our mission here is to love God, love people, and to serve the world. And we are delighted and awesomely glad today that you have taken this opportunity to worship with us today. Listen, whether you are on in the building or on our virtual platforms, you are welcome. And I hope you've come with a spirit of expectation because God has something for you today. And I know you're going to be blessed by this experience. So again, welcome to worship. Again, greetings. I want to take this opportunity to remind you that there are so many ways that you can connect here with us at ABC. We have our Facebook groups and we have the opportunity for you to connect on Facebook so that you can always be in the loop with what's going on here at ABC. Perhaps you're not a Facebook person. You don't really do that part of social media. Don't worry, there's also YouTube. You can also connect with us on YouTube. We have several opportunities for you to connect there with us as well. Maybe you wanna put the service up on your TV at home or you wanna have it there with you on your phone. I got in trouble when I talked to and about the Android users the last time, so I'm not gonna say anything about the Android users, but you might still want to get an iPhone. But anyway, there's also opportunity for you to connect online at abyssiniachurch.org. So listen, those are three opportunities for you to connect with us and continue to grow with us. I also want to encourage our online community. There are plenty of opportunities for you to grow with us if you are not here local. When we have opportunities for our Bible study, our growth groups, when we offer those platforms online through Zoom, I want to challenge you, make sure that you register for those classes, that you connect and grow with us. Part of our mission is to grow disciples and doing that is also to grow in God's word. And so we want you to grow and connect with us, not only through our worship experiences, but also in the word of God. And listen, I haven't said it yet, but you know I can't leave this opportunity without always reminding you to do what? Share, share, share. Yes, you have to share our worship experience. We've already declared that what? We're one of the best churches on this side of heaven. So you have to share our worship experience. We have amazing preaching and teaching that goes forth. We have a wonderful worship experience that goes forth. Our praise team, band, we don't want to hold all of this goodness to ourselves. So make sure that you share our worship experience. Listen, zoom in, take out your phone right now. If you're in worship, take it out, go ahead, it's okay and make sure you share our worship experience. We are in for an awesome time in God, and we don't ever wanna have this opportunity that we don't do what? Share, share, share. So go ahead, make sure you do that, and let's worship God together.
Well, here at ABC, one of the ways that we give to God is through our financial contributions that we give to our local church. And I wanna thank all of you for the tremendous ways that you partner with us. You give faithfully of your tithes and offerings to support this ministry and the work. It is because of people like you that we have tremendous impact in our local city and abroad through your consistent giving. And I wanna encourage you as you are right now preparing for worship to be prayerful about what you will give today. Matter of fact, I wanna encourage you now to go ahead and sow and give your offerings today. There are several ways you can do that. We make it easy and convenient. If you're in the building right now, you can ask one of the ushers for an envelope and you can give your offering that way. But a convenient way for you to give your offerings today is by taking out your phone right now and going to Givelify or push pay if you want to text your offering or you can go to abyssiniachurch.org and go right online and give your offering today one of the things i want to encourage you to do is to automate it you can go on any of those platforms and automate your giving we automate what is important you can set up a systematic way whether you receive your um, contributions and your paychecks weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, you can set up a convenient, automated way to give your offerings on a consistent basis to God, to this local church. Thank you, because it is because of your generosity that we are able to impact our local schools, to partner with so many nonprofits here locally and abroad to help bring joy and the light of Christ to so many people who are in need. And we do all of that through generosity and consistent and systematic giving. I want to encourage you today as we're preparing for this worship experience to give and to be a part of what we're doing to help transform communities and impact lives. So let's get ready now to give, to sow, and prayerfully be a partner in what we're doing here at Abyssinia Baptist Church. I thank you for your gifts. I thank you for your generosity. It's because of you that we are having impact and transforming this world. God bless you and thank you for your partner. Good morning, ABC. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet and let's prepare to go into worship together? I don't know about you, but I'm excited and I'm expecting great things today. I'm expecting great things this week because I made it to the house of the Lord. So let's posture ourselves. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you humbly, first of all, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this appointed place at this appointed time. God, we thank you for keeping danger seen and unseen away from us, God. We thank you for your hand of protection that has kept us. Today, we are grateful to be alive. We're grateful to be able to breathe in and out. We're grateful to be able to walk and talk. God, we say thank you, Lord. God, we come into your house with open mouths and with hands lifted and with our mouths filled with praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that as we come into this place, that you would settle our minds, settle our spirits, God. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that any barriers that would keep us from feeling you and experiencing you today, I pray, oh God, that you would break it up in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that your glory would saturate this room. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you would bless us abundantly, oh God, just for making it to this point. God, we ask, oh God, that you would keep the hand of the enemy away from us this week. We thank you, God, that we'll have a testimony that when we were going to get frustrated, you gave us peace. When we thought we were in pain, you brought relief. So, God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all the ways you've made and what you're going to do. And our vow is we're going to lift your name, the name of Jesus, the name that's mighty to save, the name that's mighty to heal. God, we are intentionally going to lift your name for you are worthy to be praised. So, God, we love you, we honor you, and we give your name great praise and if you agree with that prayer do me a favor and lift up a sound of praise all over this room I don't care what you have just lift it this morning he wants to hear from you 
God, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah, for you are worthy to be praised. So we bless your name. Hallelujah. One more time, clap your hands and give them great praise. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have fun this morning. Is that all right? Y'all going to help us? Do me a favor. Everybody clap your hands. Come on.
Israel, open your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Like you know he's worthy. Like you know he's great. Like you know he's omnipotent. Like you know he's a keeper. Like you know he's amazing. Hallelujah. We lift your name. Come on, I dare you to just throw his name in the atmosphere. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whatever I need is in your name. So today we lift your name. High above our problems. Come on, we lift your name, Jesus. One more time. Clap your hands.
great Savior. You're a great God. And we worship you. We open up our mouths in this moment because we realize you are Lord. You are King. You are God. And we lift your name. Come on, you don't need my assistance. But we lift your name. Hey, yes, Lord. Your name is high. We bless you, Lord. So as we love on you, Lord, receive our love. This is our prayer. Receive our love. Can you just lift your hands? Because as we shout, we shout your name. Receive our praises. Receive our praises. Because your name is high. Lord, be glorified. There's no other name. There's no other name. There's no other name like yours. Yes, Lord. Your name is high. Be glorified. For you are great. You are great. And greatly to be praised. So take joy. up all over this place. Does anybody come to exalt the Lord this morning? Come on, let's lift them up. Let's lift them up. There's so much trying to weigh us down, but I promise you, if you lift him up, he declares in his word, if he is lifted up, he will draw, somebody say, all men unto him. Come on, lift them up. <laughs> Lift them up. Come on, come on. Lift them up with the clapping of your hands and the opening of your mouths. He is worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. I want to invite you all to stand all across the sanctuary today as we prepare to enter into this time of prayer today. How drunk. what we've come to do. Tim up. Still he speaks from a turn. Yeah. Thank you for that, BJ. And if I if I up from how draw all to me hallelujah 
As we prepare to pray today for every person that is pressing in your spirit today online, we're in this room today. Put their names in the atmosphere right now. Come on, let's come into agreement today. Let's begin to put their names in the atmosphere. You can list their names in the chats right now on all of those platforms, YouTube, our website, on Facebook. Come on, let's begin to just take this time to prepare to intercede today for those who are sick, those who are homebound, and those who you may know may be dealing with concerns today. We believe in the power of prayer today. We believe in prayer, with the power of prayer. And so today we put those names in the atmosphere right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's in need of a miracle today. Somebody's in need of a breakthrough today. We know our God is able. And we can come boldly today to the throne knowing that our God is able to do anything. We are asking God today, even now, to make his love greater than the hate that's in this world, the evil that exists. We're constantly reminded of, of why we are, as Christians are needed in this world and our task is to make love greater to make love speak louder than hate and I thank God today that I've come to know his love and it's his love that saturates my heart to make me be able to love others yes God and so we pray for those today whose hearts are filled with hate and evil. It just reminds us of the work we got to do as believers. And our God is a just God. <laughs> our God is a just God. And he sits on the throne. Father, we thank you today for another week's journey. We thank you today, God, that you've kept us all week through the hustle and bustle and through all of our activities, our chores, our work, our school. You've kept us. And, for, and that, God, we don't take for granted. Thank you that you sustained us another week. You had shelter over us and you've closed us and we had something to eat, and we just thank you for all that you've provided for us another seven days. God, we say thank you. The gas in our cars, the reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we say thank you. We present today you are grateful, and we present today a, gra a heart of gratitude before you now. Before we ask you for anything, we just want to take this time now to just tell you thank you. You are an awesome God. You're a big God, and we make you even now bigger than anything we're facing, any circumstance, or any situation. And we know, God, that you are sovereign. We know that you are in control. And we thank you right now for being our Father. Father, we ask for forgiveness of our sins because we know we thought things this week and we've done things this week that have not always been consistent with your word. And so right now, even in this moment, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, that makes this moment possible that we can boldly come before your throne with our petition and our request. We thank you for Jesus the lover of our souls, the savior of our life. We thank you right now for Jesus. And now, Father, you've heard names mentioned and you see the names in those chats right now. And Father, you've heard every utterance and you know the weight that many came in this morning carrying. And so God, we don't have to ask you to do anything because we know you by faith you're already working 
on our behalf. You're already moving in our situations and circumstances. And so, Father, we ask now that you would give us clarity. You would align us with your will, even when we don't understand how you're moving. God, give us the faith to trust you. God, even when we don't see how things are going to work out, keep us anchored in faith and keep us encouraged right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we pray for the sickness in this world, the sickness of mind, the sickness of heart, the sickness of body. We know you are the great physician, and we know you are the great healer. So, Father, right now, we are praying that you would heal this nation. Your word declares if your people would seek your face and call upon your name, and then you would bring healing to the land. And so, God, there's a faithful remnant in this room there. There's a faithful remnant who believe in your power, who believe in your justice, who believe in your love. And so, God, we say have your way in this earth be God and we know you are God and there's no one beside you so Satan we send you notice now that you won't have the last word in our situation in our circumstance or in this world and by faith right now we declare God that you're turning things around that you're moving on our behalf we declare now the healing is ours breakthrough is ours miracles are happening even now in the name of Jesus our healing is on the way we declare it now open doors are happening now in Jesus name and so in faith we collectively begin to just give you praise we collectively now just begin to give you a thank you Jesus we collectively begin to declare it is so and we believe by the power of faith that justice will prevail in Jesus name your love will reign supreme in Jesus name I speak blessings on everybody over my road right now that's worshiping with me today that God we're in a season where the devil is trying to make his way great but we know you are a greater God and we declare it's done in your name if you believe it I dare you to just give him a praise I dare you I dare you I dare somebody to open up their mouth and believe God that he's making a way, that he's working it out. Look at your neighbor before you take your seat and say, neighbor, he's never failed me yet. I don't know about you, but he's never failed me yet. And on that alone, I can give him a praise. Do I have a witness in this room? Hallelujah. Listen, one more thing before you take your seat. You know what time it is. One, we want to say welcome to all of you that are worshiping with us for the first time. We welcome and greet you this morning online in this room. And before you take your seat, you already know what to do. If you Some, some of you should have already done it when you came in the room this morning. It's turn to two or three people and, and tell them good morning. Introduce yourself. If nobody is right next to you, step out of the aisle and go across the aisle and and say good morning to somebody. Listen at your, tell your neighbor, neighbor, we ain't no stuck up church here. We ain't no stuck up. We a friendly church. We a friendly church. Amen, amen. You greeted your neighbors all over the room today. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, ABC. Y'all doing all right this morning? Amen. We thank God for the opportunity that we have to worship God today and to gather in the house of the Lord to begin our week. There's no better way to start your week than to start it in worship. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen, I got a few things I just want to push and to remind you of that's taking place in the life of our church. I want to remind you, one, remember that be on the lookout in your emails for your giving statements for the year. Um, for those of you that you have emails on file, please be on the lookout for those. And for those who would like a personal copy, um, you can always call our church office, but be on the lookout for your 2022 um, giving statements that should be in your email. So please check your emails, check your junk boxes over the next couple of weeks um, for those giving statements. Amen. Listen, on this coming Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, January 31st, choir rehearsal, our ensemble rehearsal. And so for those of you that haven't joined yet, you 
you um, would like to come out and be a part of the choir ensemble, men, women, um, young, young, young adults, y'all more than welcome to come out on January 31st right here in our sanctuary at 7 p.m. And they start promptly on time. And so we would love for you to be in the house um, for the first time that they will prepare to, um, to sing and minister for this year. Amen. So remember that January 31st, 7 p.m. Listen, I want to thank you for your generous contributions and giving for our blessing bag initiative thank you so much for the seeds that you've been sowing and giving and thank you for those of our partners online that have been sowing and giving thank you so much today will be the last day that we will give offerings to that because all of this week we will be preparing for that initiative if you haven't signed up yet to volunteer remember on next sunday um all of those items that we are preparing to um put in the blessing bags. We will be assembling right at the church an assembly line over in our fellowship hall to put all of those items in the blessing bag. So as many hands as we can get, um, that will help us um, move quickly and so we can get it done and then prepare to deliver it to the homeless shelters here in our city and to and bless our homeless um, with all of those items that we are sowing into their lives. Amen. So please, right after church, if you haven't already, um, I don't know how many volunteers we even have. I don't know if we have enough, but please, listen, the more hands we get, the quicker we can get it done to the glory of God. Amen. Um, and we can all go home together. So please um, sign up. Our young people, you're more than welcome to sign up as well um, and to be a part of that. Remember this week, Wednesday, our Bible study is in person at 12 noon and you can join us online at 7 p.m. for that time in the word that time of fellowship I thank God for our communities of Bible study groups that are growing in the word of God so jump in this week if you haven't yet this year just jump in this week look at your neighbor say Jake neighbor jump in this week um, and let's grow in the word together um, I want you to all put on your calendars next Saturday next Saturday we will be hosting our intercessory prayer time here in the sanctuary at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning I want you to join Lady J and myself as we come before before God, lay and tarry at the altar and begin to just seek God. How many of you know these are praying times? Well, all the time is praying times, but I need some true prayer warriors and intercessors um, to meet us here in the sanctuary Saturday at 9 a.m. February the 4th, and we're going to come together seek the face of God and, and just and begin to believe God um, for some things. So I look for you to join us in that time of prayer on, um, on, on Saturday morning. This, I believe in God for a powerful move and a powerful time. It's always a powerful time when we get together and pray, man. There was some praying saints around ABC. And so we want you to join us on that time. Next said that will be an in-person gathering on next Saturday. And so we look forward to you being in worship with us. Then February the 12th, February the 12th, February the 12th. Oh, yeah, starting next Sunday, starting next Sunday, we're kicking off a new series um, where we're going to be following the life of Abraham. It's a series I'm entitling The Blessed Life. Are y'all really wanting to live the blessed life this year? Amen, somebody. Y'all want to live the blessed life? Amen. We're already in this year. It's about being blessable. And so we're going to study the life of Abraham starting on next Sunday. And I'm excited about kicking that time off in the word and the series in Abraham. Then on February the 12th, it's Super Sunday. It's Super Sunday. We're encouraging everybody on that Sunday to rock your favorite NFL team on Super Sunday, February the 12th. It is also Family and Friends Day. We're encouraging you to bring your family and friends on February the 12th and rock your team, even though you might not even be nowhere near the Super Bowl or being in it. That's all right, Brother McKinney. It's all right. It's all right. There's always a next year. There's always next year. There's always next year. But rock your team. Rock your gear on February the 12th, Super Sunday. Um, and bring a friend with you on worship. It's going to be a great time in worship. And the last thing I have right before we give today is for all of our couples, we want you to put on your calendars February the 24th for our couples date night, um, our paint and chew it's going to be a great time of fellowship. Um, you can register. It is $60 per couple. Registration deadline is February the 19th. So all married couples, holla at me, all married couples in the room, holla at, holla at your boy. Y'all don't sound too excited. 
You don't sound too excited. You don't sound, you, I need, you excited, Lady J. Well, we gonna be here. We gonna be here. We gonna be here, but we're looking to have a great, it's gonna be a great night. Um, um, hosted paint party for the couples. We're gonna have food. It's gonna be fellowship. It's gonna be a great time. So please make sure you register. Our registration deadline is February the 19th so that we can make sure all preparations are in order for that event. Amen, somebody? Amen. Come on, let's prepare to worship God through giving today. Um, if you need an offering envelope, be so kind to just lift your hand. Our ushers will make sure that you receive an envelope today um, as you prepare to give. If not, come on, let's lift our phones um, right now as we prepare to give and we prepare to sow and bring to God our offerings for this week. For those of you that's online today, um, we encourage you now to participate in this time of giving as we prepare to honor God this week. Um, as we bring him our tithes and offerings. For those of our couples, you can always go right to our app if you have already downloaded the church app on your phone and register for that event, or you can go to um, our website and register for that event, or if you get our weekly emails, you can just click the link and you can register for that event right through um, all of those platforms. Come on, let's lift our phones. Let's come on, let's prepare to worship God through giving. This is a great part of our worship as we render unto God the fruit of our labor from this week. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, this privilege that we have to participate in giving. And as a part of our worship, God, we give, we bring before you now offerings with grateful and glad hearts. Receive our gifts, receive our offerings now. And may these offerings, this time for this week, be able to impact lives in our city and this nation. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity. In Jesus' name, we say together, amen. Come on, let's give now. We'll collect those offering envelopes at the end, and let's prepare to receive our worship team.
for me. I thank you, Lord, for just keeping me where you need me to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I know I'm so, so, I'm now so not deserving. Lord knows I'm so stained. But I thank you, Lord, for plucking at each and every time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. Anybody glad he blocked it? Now some of y'all should have took off running around the building when you start thinking about the stuff that you know he blocked. But you ought to have an old school shout this morning for the danger seen and unseen. The devil tried it. But it didn't work. Elbow your neighbor, say, neighbor, he blocked it. He blocked it. He blocked it. He blocked it. Ooh. Ah, God. He blocked it. Go ahead and take 10 seconds and give him a block. He blocked it, shout. Somebody ought to just give him a, he blocked it, shout. <laughs> Woo! He blocked cancer. Bankruptcy. <laughs> Depression. <laughs> Come on, give him a, give him a, he blocked it shout. You should have lost the house. You should have lost the car. But he blocked it. Woo! If you want to, you can sit there if you want to. There you go. Come on. Hallelujah. We still got somebody shouting on this side. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He blocked it. He blocked it. That's why I can declare that there is no weapon that is formed against me. It is not going to prosper. Hallelujah. Can you just lift those hands and just give him worship? Just give him praise. When depression was trying to set in, thank God he blocked it. Trying to kill your joy, he blocked it. <laughs> he wouldn't let it. He wouldn't let it. 
you couldn't do it on your own. It was all the Lord's doing. Today we just thank him. I don't know about you, but I got a list of stuff that he's blocked in my life. <laughs> when you thought you were going to lose it all, the Lord blocked it, canceled it. Ah, my God. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yo. Woo. He blocked it. Did that bless y'all this morning? Did that bless y'all? My God. Come on, let's stand all over the sanctuary. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tammy. Thank y'all. My God. My God. I serve a God who can do anything. Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. the Lord knows <laughs> some things you just don't even have time to tell nobody when you start thinking about the wonders of his works in your life yeah, that's, that's what this moment is that's what this moment is <laughs> That's what this moment is. When folk counted you out, there are people in this room, they were planning your funeral and you in church today. <laughs> you got served the eviction papers. God blocked it. Somebody ought to just holler, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. I feel sorry for people that don't have no faith. When you're facing life's impossibilities. And somebody's in this room. Somebody's watching me now. You have your own impossibilities that you're facing. But I want you to know that. 
that you have a God who's, who moves and parts red seas. <laughs> you have a God who moves mountain. I don't know what your red sea is. I don't know what your mountain is. But you have a God that when it seems impossible, There is nothing, somebody holler nothing, impossible for God. Thank you, Jesus. Just believe it, just trust, and watch him work. Psalm 1. Y'all making it real hard for me to finish this today. Y'all making it real hard. Real hard. Woo! I love worship. I love worship. During the course of the pandemic, when I used to have to preach in this building by myself, this is what I missed. The corporate worship. It ain't nothing like corporate worship. It's nothing like this. It's nothing like it. I don't know no other way to start my week. Online is cool, but ain't nothing like being in this building. To hear, to hear the worship, to hear the saints, to hear the collective voices. Yeah. Woo, all right. Y'all just done got me all messed up here. Huh? Mm. Psalm 1, that's where I was. Psalm 1 going to finish this today. Let me read this verses 1 collectively, verses 1 through 4. Um, and Aisha, I'm going to read it from the New King James um, version first. And it says this, the one you are probably most familiar with. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Here's the verse that we want. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit, its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Here's where we're going today. The ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish and the church says amen, amen. today I want to tag this text from those verses those concluding verses verse 4 the ungodly are not so are like chaff which the wind drives away. I want to tag that verse today and I want to preach and conclude this sermon, this series in Psalm 1 with this thought in mind. A life you don't want. A life you don't want. The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. CEV says, this isn't true for those who are evil. <laughs> they are like straw blown by the wind. A life you don't want. You may be seated.
So for the last several weeks, we've been walking through Psalm 1. Psalm 1, this opening psalm in this entire collection of this powerful book of psalms, starts with the psalm that has given us a premise, a perspective, and has presented before us two options that you and I have the opportunity to choose. We understand that God does not impose or force his will on us because from the very beginning, we have a God who's given and created us with a powerful dimension, and that is the ability to make choices. And so God doesn't impose his will on us. He presents his will, but at the end of the day, it is left up to you and I to choose whether or not we will follow him, serve him, and love him. Psalm 1 has presented to us two paths that we ultimately can choose from. One of the things that has become evidently clear for us is many like to live their life trying to live in the middle of the road, but it's from the Psalter, it is obviously and evidently clear that in life there are only two, two paths that you can choose from. And that is one, you can choose the path of the godly who choose to follow the will, the word of God as the guiding and influencing dimension in your life, or you can choose the way of the world and the culture. The choice is really up to you. And I hope over the last several weeks as we begin this year, you, many of you that if you were in conflict, if many of you that were in this room that weren't quite settled and you know that there have been some areas in your life where you've tried to straddle the fence, I hope that this series has helped you even as you start this year to settle in on the fact that you really want to live life going after God. I, I hope that you have made the decision that you are going to be guided and governed by God's word and God's will for your life. Because if you have made that choice, I want to encourage you and let you know why it may not be the popular choice with the world, with the society, and even the culture why it may not be the most popular, I want to let you know today, it is going to be the most rewarding. And you have to decide that, that when it comes to my life, when it comes to my values, when it comes to my beliefs, that I am going to be anchored and governed and guided by God's word and God's will for my life. And what the psalmist tells us today, that when we have decided to make that choice and that decision for our lives, then verse 3 will be what our life will begin to look like. For the person who chooses God and who chooses that path, and ultimately we understand that the paths we choose becomes our system. And what we've discovered, everything works in this world, even our bodies, has been designed by God that works by a system. And so if there are things in your life that are not working right for you right now, it has everything to do with the fact that your system is jacked up and what God God wants you to do in the first of this year is to get the system right. Maybe you've been employing the wrong system and as a result of using the, and employing the wrong system, you're not getting the results that you want and it has everything to do with the system that you've been employing. The path, if you choose correctly, is the system now that will govern your life, that will lead your life, and ultimately will determine your values and your beliefs, the path that you choose. And the path that you choose will ultimately yield the results in our lives. Either they will lead to a life that God can bless, or it leads to a life that is unblessable. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I want a life that's blessable. And we've seen what the blessed life looks like 
For you shall be like a what? Tree planted by the rivers of water. That's the life I want. I don't know about anybody else, but that's what, that's what I want for my life. That's what I want for my marriage. That's what I want for my children. Is there anybody here? That's what I want for my family. My God, that's what I want for my church family. A tree life. Now, remember, what does a tree life look like? Well, that tree life looks like a couple of peas that we gave you on last week. Somebody say, you're planted. You're, you are planted by the rivers of water. And not only are you planted, but you live a life that is productive, that produces fruit in season. So I'm planted. I have a productive life. And then it says, and whatsoever they do shall prosper. Things work. Does anybody just want things to work in your life? Come on, talk to me, somebody. I just want stuff to be working. I want it to be clicking in my life. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And that's what it is, what it means to prosper. It means things Things are clicking. Things are working. Man, I want my friendships to be clicking. I want my marriage to be working. Come on. I want to be going through life and I want to be able to see the results of my in my life. And that's what it really means to be blessed is meaning that my life, I start seeing results. Life is working. Now, that's the life you want. At least you say you want. If you choose to delight yourself in God, in his word, and you seek to be pleased with following God's word and doing the root work that's necessary to produce the fruit in your life, then that life is possible for you, my brother, my sister. That's why from the very beginning of the psalm, he says, blessed is the person. Anyone can live that kind of life. Anyone, not, not just the preacher, not just somebody who got status. No, blessed is the person. My God. Young person, young adult, senior, whoever you are, whatever you look like, <laughs> blessed is the person that seeks to ascribe to live this kind of life, verse 3 can be yours. I hope you're praying on that. I, I hope you're really letting that soak in, that if you really want verse 3 to be what your life looks like, it is possible for anybody in this room to have that kind of life, to have a blessed life. If you choose that path, but now, just in case you decide not to, maybe I haven't convinced you enough. Maybe, maybe I haven't preached this hard enough. Maybe I ain't got through to you, and you still ain't sold out on choosing the path to go after God. Now, I, I want to let you know, the psalmist provides us another option. <laughs> Y'all see it? It is not sold for the ungodly. Do you see it? Godly, ungodly. That's all. Godly, ungodly. So if you're not choosing God, I want to let you know your no choice is still a choice. <laughs> all right? If you don't choose God by default, you're choosing the other option. So let me tell you what that life looks like. He tells us right here, it is not so for the ungodly. Why? Because the ungodly, now notice you, you got a tree and you got what? Somebody said water. No. Well, you do have water. <laughs> but, but here's the two pictures. Either I can have a tree life or I can have a shape life. So the, the godly are compared to a tree. The ungodly are compared to shape. Now, what life you want? You say you want tree. Right? 
You say you won't treat. I hope and pray that you won't treat. But, but if you choose this other option, let's, let's look at what a shape like looks like. Now, so what is this shape? Well, if you know anything about thrashing wheat and, and separating um, the grains in, in the wheat, that's, that's where that comes from. In, in the biblical times, there, there's a lot of metaphors throughout the scriptures and the word that are that, that even Jesus uses to make powerful kingdom illustrations using the whole wheat and the shape um, analogy. And so by definition, and just so to help define what shape is, is if you've ever seen um, wheat separated and the shape separated, it's the loose outer covering of the wheat and other grains that must be separated normally through the process at the threshing floor in the process of harvesting grain. And what normally would happen in this process is when the wheat is separated from the um, from the shape, the shape is these loud the the lighter outer portion um, of the wheat that gets separated from the wheat. And what would happen at the threshing floor is when they would separate the wheat, the, the weight of the, the wheat and the grain would fall to the ground while the shape would literally be blown away and carried away. Now, the, the shaft had no value. It had no use, and at times they would collect some of the shaft and just use it to burn or keep the fires going, but the shape really serves no purpose. It really has no value. It is the light shape that ends up getting blown away while the grain and the weight of the grain would remain and fall in the bowls. Now, what happens is we must separate the worthless shape from the valuable grain. That's why Jesus even uses this illustration because many in this agriculture context, they could immediately see it and understand it. And that's why Jesus says stuff to them like, let the wheat and the what? Taff and the shaft grow together. And on the day of separation, the day of judgment, I will do the separation. That's why he says stuff like that because they could immediately understand this process of what happens when wheat is harvested at the threshing floor. The shape that louder coat that light outer coating would be separated it would literally be blown away in the air and carried away now listen to what the psalmist says here he says if I choose the way of God and I delight myself in God's word. I can become like a tree that is planted by rivers of water. Watch this. A tree that is stable, that is secure. A tree that is getting nourished and fed by the stream and the rivers of God and his presence and his word. And then I can have a productive life. And I can have a life that is prosperous. And I can have a life that is just everything in my life is just working. Or I can have a life. Like the shape. Now, now, what does that mean? Well, it means a couple of things. If I if I end up choosing the ungodly, if I end up choosing to be governed and guided by the influences of the culture, because <laughs> the culture is strong, isn't it? Because the culture says something is right. I do what the culture says. Because, because the latest entertainers and the rappers and the actors say something is right. Even if they make something law and I have the license to do it, <laughs> don't necessarily mean that it's right according to God's word. Right? And so now this applies to every area of my life. How, how, I, how I govern my money, how I govern my body, how I raise my children, how I date. I, I can't get nobody to talk to me in here. The things I do in life, it, they, they're going to be guided and governed by something. <laughs> and so I got to choose... What I'm going to 
going to allow to govern and guide me. I got to choose my value system. What I believe in. And I got to live my life based upon that conviction regardless of what my friends say. Regardless of what popular belief is. Now, y'all, here's the tough thing about this. Every day I got to choose. Every day I got to choose. When you wake up in the morning, you got to choose what's going to govern me. When, when I go to work, when I go to class, huh? When somebody jumps in your DM on Instagram, Facebook, when, 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 when you have all of this stuff coming at you, huh? Do, do I look at, do I scroll, do I stop? <laughs> and watch this twerking video? And not only do I watch, do I decide to follow them? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? I got to choose. Huh? Am, am I going to stop? Am I going to pause? And how long I'm going to stay here? Because <laughs> the longer I stay, I thought I had a real church. You start thinking about doing stuff you weren't even thinking about doing. Hmm? Every day I'm, I'm faced with these choices. Every day I'm presented with these choices. And, and my responses are, are going to either be a godly response or an ungodly. All right, let me, let, let's do this. So, so what does the shape look like? Well, a couple of things. Remember now, the shape is the part of the wheat that gets separated, that's light, that is blown and carried away by the wind. So what does that suggest? Well, a couple of things. A shape light suggests a couple of things. One, it suggests that one, my life is unstable. That's one. An unstable. Now, watch this. Here's, here's, here's how the Spirit can help you today. If there are areas in your life right now that are unstable, it has, it, it, it's pointing you in the direction of the, some of the choices you've made. Somebody right now, you're listening to me, you're watching me, you're in this room, and you're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm in this unstable relationship. And I promise you, it had everything to do with how you chose to get in the relationship. If you got unstable finances... I promise you it has everything to do with you not following faithful stewardship that got you in an unstable position. Y'all see how this works? <laughs> Wherever there is instability in your life, it has everything to do with the choices that you have not, that you made in the past. Now, come on, let's be honest. A lot of us in this room, it's been the grace of God that has covered a lot of our bad decisions. But let's be honest in here. You made the decision. God didn't make you date them. God didn't make you sign your name. And it wasn't even the devil. You can't blame it on none of them. It was your choice. So a shape life is an unstable life. It's an unstable life. This person is going with the latest and greatest. They're not stable in their value system. They're not stable in their beliefs. They're unstable. And so whatever the popular opinions are, that's what they try next. Whatever this one says, that's what they doing next. They are unstable. And watch this. And when life gets hard and when the wind starts blowing, guess what, y'all? The shape life, this person gets carried away. 
They are unstable. Somebody say they're unstable. Not only is a shape life unstable, but a shape life is also unproductive. A shape life is not producing anything. There's, they're, 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 they're in an unproductive place. They're in an unproductive season of their life because you can't produce anything with shape. So here you are, you're unstable, and you're unproductive. And not only are you unstable, unproductive, but here's another one for you. You're unvaluable. Remember that they separate the shave from the wheat because the shave is worthless. Here's a beautiful image of that. Y'all remember the prodigal son? You remember the prodigal son, don't you? You know what happened to the prodigal son? Watch this. The prodigal son makes a what? A deliberate choice to choose a life separated from the father. Y'all remember that? He deliberately walks into the house, goes to his father, and says, Father, give me my portion of my inheritance and let me be on my way. Now, here's the tripped up part about that. He deliberately chooses a life separated from the father because for a son to go into his father while his father is still alive and asks for his inheritance, he's literally saying to his father, you are dead to me. I, I don't want your influence. I don't want your guidance, but watch this. But give me your stuff. And that's how a lot of us live. That's how a lot of us treat God. God, I want your blessings. I need your stuff. I need your favor. I need your blessings. But I don't want you to tell me who to date. I don't want you to tell me how to act. I don't want you to tell me how to live my life. I want to live my life the way I want to live. It's my thing, and I want to do what I want to do. But I need your blessings. I need your stuff in order to do it. And watch this. Here's the picture. So he gets the father's possessions. The father gives him his inheritance. And then what he does, y'all? He go out there and he's a baller. He's a shot caller. He's living. He's doing it, y'all. He's in the club making it rain. He got his friends and, and they doing the doggone thing. He got women. He got friends. And he's spending and enjoying. Watch this, y'all. All the while... Life is unstable because it comes a season when all of that runs out. It's unstable. His, his prosperity doesn't last because he don't have good stewardship practices. Y are y'all seeing this? And then what happens, y'all, when he wasted and when he spent all and he's ran out and there's a famine that hits, right? He ain't prepared to handle a famine because he's been living life doing it his what? His own way. And then now he finds himself where? In the pig pen of life. Some of y'all know about that place. Some of us have been to that place. And can I tell you the greatest testimony we can give our children and the next generation is to raise up a generation that lives a life in God that never has some of our testimonies. And they, I wish I had a witness in here that never knows anything about hitting the pig pen. It, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to raise a generation that can testify and say, I've been walking with God my whole life. Ever since I was a child, I've been walking with God. I can't get nobody to talk back to me in here. We need to raise a generation that don't have some of our testimonies where we had to get to the pig pen of life to find out that God was who God says he was and his word is true. We need to change that narrative and change that testimony. God needs to raise up a generation that will serve him from the time they born. And he hits this place because he chose the wrong. He chose a life separated from God. And that life is unstable. That life is unproductive. And that life leads to no value. 
he, he ends up in such a place that he decides to eat what the pigs eat. Huh? You talking about hidden bottom. A Jewish kid, one taking on the job of feeding swine, and not only feeding swine, but deciding to eat what swine eat. Is that the kind of life you want? <laughs> is that what you want your life to look like? And what's sad is there are a lot of people who are living that way coming to church every week. Unstable, unproductive, and you don't understand your true value. Look at somebody tell them, I don't want that kind of life. So a shape life, it's unstable, it's unproductive, it's, it's unvaluable. And here's the last thing. Y'all, it's unblessable. It's unblessable. Listen at, listen, at, listen at the verse again. The ungodly are not so, but they are like shape which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Watch this. For the Lord knows. <laughs> For the Lord knows <laughs> the way of the righteous but the way of the godly, ungodly shall perish. For, look at somebody tell them, the Lord knows. From the CE version, it reads this way, that last part. The Lord protects everyone who follows him. But the wicked follow a road that leads to ruin. Did y'all see it? The Lord knows what you choose and who you choose. I'm done. <laughs> Here's what we do. We choose what we want to choose. And then we want God to bless it. <laughs> We choose what we want to choose, then ask God to bless it. Oh, y'all, y'all being funny with me this morning. You go out and buy it, can't afford it, then pray to God that He let you keep it. You got into the relationship behind your flesh. And you rationalize to yourself that they were just a good person. I know, I know they're not saved. I know they're not in church. But listen, I can help get them saved. No, no, no. They, 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 they don't. They, they, they don't. They don't believe in God. They don't. They don't go to church. But, but, but they're a good person. And you made the decision with your flesh. But now you're praying to God. You, 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 you living together. Praying to God to come up with the rent money. How crazy is that? Right? The Lord knows the way of the righteous. <laughs> Here it is. 
Y'all, God can't bless it. I know that's tough. I know that's hard. I know. I know. But, but, but you asking God to do something that contradicts him. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He, look at somebody and say, he can't. Now, as we, as we close, you make the choice. You, you make the choice. Do you want to have a life that God can bless? Or do you want to keep living and being unblessable? <laughs> but I got good news for those in the room that want to be blessable. Here's the good news. Did you see it? The CE version gave it, gave it to you. Notice what the, say, the CE version says. It says, the Lord protects the way of the righteous. Here, here's the good news. Here's the guarantee. Y'all, let's take this and shut it down for the morning. And go get some brunch today. I don't know. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, where you going today? Where you going today? Where you going? Some of y'all say, I'm going home. But here's the good news. Are y'all ready for the good news? If I choose God, if I choose his way, I will see the promises of his word come to pass in my life. Notice that the guarantee that the scripture gives us is the Lord will protect those who choose him and his way. In other words, he says that if you choose the way of God, that's the way that's going to lead to blessing. That is what God is going to put his hand on. That's when you're going to see the favor of God. And I know I got about five people or ten in this room that have seen it in their own life. That when you start doing things God's way, that's when you start seeing things working in your life. Is there anybody here that can testify that it might took you some time and you were stubborn and bullheaded but can somebody help a brother out close this sermon that you've seen it, that the moment you got out of your way and stopped trying to do it your way and doing what others said and trying to do it your best to align your life with the word of God, you've seen the change in yourself, you've seen it in your marriage, you've seen it in your children, you see it in your money, you see it in your body, you see it in every area because life starts working. Because God protects those who do it his way. That's why I ain't got to fight. I can work a job and I ain't got the brown nose. I ain't got the politic. I don't have to do any of that because I know my promotions don't come from man. My promotions come from God. I, and I serve a God that'll bring my name up in rooms and at tables when I ain't even in the room and even among people that don't even like me. I can't get no church in here. Even with haters and folk digging ditches for me, I ain't got to worry about none of that because I have a God who's protecting me when I'm trying to do things the right way. And that way leads to a life that God can bless. Come on, let's stand. So I got to choose the last Sunday in January. I got to choose. I got to choose the path. I got to choose the path. Do I want to be a tree? <laughs> or do I want 
a shaped life. I hope, I hope. I'm talking to young adults in here. It's tough. It ain't popular. But I hope you want to be a tree. That's planted by rivers of water. That bears fruit in season. Whose leaves do not wither. And whatever you do shall prosper. Is that the life you want? Are we going to go after it this year, y'all? Are we going after the blessable life? Yeah, come on. I want to be blessable. Come on, hands raised to God. Come on, let's surrender right now. Let's surrender. Let's surrender right now. I will trust you when your spirit. When your spirit. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. With my whole heart. With my whole heart, I will. And my answer. And my answer will be. Yeah. Yes. Come on, let's sing that prayer chant one more time. Come on, let's make that direct declaration. I don't know what you need to yield, but say, I'll say yes. Lord, yes. Yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Yeah. Lord, yes. I will trust you. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit. Sir. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Come on, real, real softly for me, right before we go. Are you in this room today? Maybe the first yes you need to give today is yes with your life. Maybe you're here right now and you need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to say, yes, God, I want to give you my life. I want to surrender my life to you today. There are a couple of ways you can do that. One, Today, if you've never done it before, I want to encourage you today to say, yes, I want to give God my life. I, I want to get out of the driver's seat, and God, I want to let you drive. Matter of fact, I want to get in the back seat. I don't want to be sitting in the side. I want to get in the back seat and let you drive my life. I want to surrender my life to you today. Maybe you need to give him a yes with your life. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you need to come back to God. Maybe you're trying to start driving. Maybe you kicked God out the car. You kicked him out the car. And today you want to say, Lord, I want to get you back in. I want to let you back in. I want to rededicate my life. Listen, maybe you're here and you need a connection with the spiritual family. Maybe you're here, you need a connection with the spiritual family, and you need a pastor. Listen, if you want to come today, partner with us, you want to connect with us, you want to grow here, I would love to be your pastor. If you want to connect with our church today, and you're in this room, hear how simple it is. Right where you're standing, all you got to do is lift your hand, and your hand is your your sign of coming into agreement that you want to connect with us today lift that hand if you're here today you want to connect with this church you're here today you want to make a decision if you're online you can do it as well if you're in this room just lift that hand wherever you are wherever you are wherever you are in Jesus name in Jesus name come on church come on give God praise all over the room today When your spirit, the benediction is simple today. Go and live the blessed life. Go and be blessable. In Jesus' name, we all say together, amen. Come on, let's say it one more time, all the way up to your car. I'll say yes. Come on, church. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. God bless you. To your I'll say have a great week. You can leave your offerings in the baskets. will when your spirit with my God 
bless you. Have an amazing week.